Well, hello again. Uh, this time, I'm going to be coming to you from the United States, from the Alcott National Headquarters for the Theosophical Society in America. Uh, although I'm here right now, this particular video blog will take you to three countries. Uh, we're going to begin in France, which is sort of where I left off at the last one. And then we're uh, going from there to the Netherlands. And uh, then back here to the United States, where we had a bunch of different, very, very high-level events that took place. Uh, got a good chance to spend some time with uh, some of the members of the French section. Although it was a low-key time for uh, me, we had a couple of good meetings together and did some good work all in all. Uh, of course, it was on to the Netherlands for the second Dutch day. Uh, they hesitated to call it double Dutch because, as I find out, double Dutch actually has a uh, sort of meaning that's not quite that good. It talks about someone who's not talking straight. I didn't really even realize that. So whenever we do it again, we can go triple Dutch, but double Dutch was out. But it was a very, very good meeting, well attended by the members of the Dutch section, and also a very good chance to get a chance to talk to people about the questions that they all have on their mind. One of the things that you're going to be seeing that came up as one of those questions is uh, about our website for the Theosophical Society, ADYAR which has been a little bit moribund for the last uh, little while now, but we've been working on it behind the scenes. So by the time most of you are seeing this video, we will have a new website for the uh, Theosophical Society ADYAR, completely redesigned, top to bottom and middle to end. It's something that uh, hopefully it'll be something that'll be very usable to our members worldwide. In any event, I want you to go to it. The uh, address is below here on the screen. Take a look at it and then let me know your thoughts, particularly ways that we can better use it to suit your needs and the needs of our membership. Uh, at the end of the month, I found myself back here uh, at uh, Alcott once again for our 15th Theosophist which is an event that, uh, it's like an open house that we have. We had about 44 different lectures and vendors. It was a record-breaking event for us. We had more people attend, more vendors who came of all different sorts. We ended up actually having to turn vendors away this year. Over 2,000 people came for that one day, Saturday, September 12th. Always it's the Saturday following Labor Day here in the U.S. So anyway, I'm going to show you a whole bunch of scenes from all of that uh, busy, busy time, and I do hope that you enjoy it. But one thing, if you don't get anything else out of this uh, video, check out the new TS Adyar website and give me your feedback. Okay, here it is. Enjoy. After leaving Helsinki, we came to Paris to the headquarters of the French section. Kim Du, the previous president, was there with us and greeted us with a feast, not least of which was the uh, pastries. The next day was off to Giverny for the uh, meeting with the group at Claude Monet's garden. This is the inspiration of his water lily paintings and uh, many of the things that he was quite famous for. Absolutely beautiful place and you can see the source of his inspiration. While we were there we had a picnic together which then developed into a meeting which we had related to a variety of subjects about the TS and uh, Theosophy. From there it was on to Amsterdam and then to Narden for a Dutch day and a stay at St. Michael's, St. Michael's House at the International Theosophical Center in Narden. Uh, we were there last year, right around the same time, where they held the Dutch day. Uh, during the time there, there are a number of meetings that uh, ended up having. Obviously, just the normal meetings with just the folks who were there, but there was also the meeting of the ITC Council, which you see here. Uh, dinner time, meals were always a big deal, and the meals, the group just kept growing and growing and growing as we got closer to Dutch Day. Even though they call it Dutch Day, really it's quite an international gathering with people from Belgium, uh, Italy, England, 
Here you see Jenny Baker, Janet Lee from England, and Jan Kind from Brazil. The area around the ITC is just a beautiful, beautiful area. Uh, some shots from there you can see. Very pastoral, but also very high level residences. On the same campus is the St. Michael's Chapel for the Liberal Catholic Church, which was built, I think, in 1972. It's a beautiful chapel. We had a chance to have a, attend one of the services there. Uh, Parsifal is the the priest, he's also the one who was, uh, did all of the cooking for us while we were there. So here you see Parsifal. Also, as I have asked all the groups, I wanted to have a meeting with the younger people, younger members, whenever I visit a section. So here in the Netherlands, we had a meeting uh, of that sort on one of the evenings that I was there. Then it was time for the actual Dutch Day gathering, which took the entire day. Uh, it was not just me, but Ingmar de Boer, who was uh, one of the members of the council presented. And there was also a toast to celebrate the 90th anniversary of the ITC. Uh, there in Narden, quite an important occasion. Uh, Patrizia Calvi spoke about the work being done by TOS in Italy, which was quite impressive. And then uh, I had my opportunity a couple of times during the day to also address the folks who had gathered. Uh, it was a wonderful gathering. Uh, Many friends that I met for the first time last year got a chance to renew some of those friendships this year. So that's something I look forward to in the days and the years to come. When it did finally become time to leave, I was told that there's a tradition and we kept the tradition. The circle drive, you go around not once, but twice to say your goodbyes. It's a lovely, lovely little ritual that uh, I hope to do many times in the future. Then it was off to uh, Amsterdam and the plane back home to the U.S. of A, where uh, the very first thing that greeted me was a prayer breakfast that's held every year for leaders of various sorts in the Wheaton area, political leaders and a uh, variety of leaders. So we traditionally get a table at that and have members of our staff come and attend. In addition to the normal sorts of theosophical things, Mark Remick was deep in the process of replacing our two boilers, uh, an extensive project just in time for the heating season. Every year, the biggest event for us is Theosophest. Uh, this year, it was bigger than ever. Uh, we were a little bit concerned when the day before we got a nice dose of rain, but the next day turned out to be beautiful. One of the things that has happened is that we have allowed people to set up their tents, that's to say the vendors, the day before. Normally not too many people did it. This year there were more than 50 people who took us up on that. The next day, 6 o'clock a.m., a number of us were out there getting ready to park the cars. More than 1,000 cars were parked over the course of the day. More than 2,000 people actually attended, and we rely heavily on volunteers during the course of that day. Not just our staff, but uh, volunteers. We had volunteers from high schools who were local. Uh, members came and volunteered, and it's a lovely, lovely day. Uh, we have vendors of all different types. Healing, uh, sound, uh, jewelry, all sorts of things go into making the day work. We also have healers of all different types who are there. Uh, many, many people get a chance to see them. Massage therapists, Reiki, all sorts. Educational institutes join us, yoga people. We have all sorts of opportunities for people to get their henna and beauty products. And we have food vendors. Uh, everything's vegetarian. Mexican food was represented. Always the Indian food is there and they always attract a line of people. This year we also had pizza, which also sold out its popular food, of course, and ice cream. From year to year, many people look forward to the event to meet with old friends, and then new ones. This gentleman came all the way from Mexico just for this event. But there are many people who come, bring their puppies. This particular little puppy was blind. He's an old fellow. And to see the grounds and to see the building, which were in just wonderful shape. A number of people walked the labyrinth, people came to our Buddha shrine, the Mary shrine, the library, almost 800 people passed through there during the course of the day. Also, there were books that were for sale. 
But it's one of those times many people come for different things. Some people come to attend, go to our bookstore, which also had the busiest, most successful day it ever had. Always Theosophist is the biggest sales day, but this year it more than almost doubled previous years. So it was a success for us in, in every respect. Every year for the last five, my wife has done the Kids' Corner. A group of volunteers get together, and it's also a very popular thing for parents with their kids. they are programs of all different sorts, and uh, generally it's enjoyed, and it's an opportunity for parents to bring the kids, kids learn different things, and generally just have a lot of fun. But with all of this, the real focus of the event is the talks that we give, an opportunity to share some of the teachings of theosophy. And again this year, we had more than a thousand people attend the various talks that went on throughout the day, about more than 40 of them during the course of the day, from 20 minutes to an hour long. Each time it ends with a drum circle, and we also had a gong bath by our own Marion Krauss. So it was an opportunity for people to have a variety of experiences. At the end of the day, I had a chance to watch the last car go off into the setting sun.